Hey everybody, it's time for me to take advantage of this thunderstorm that we just had. I've been, uh, I've been waiting to plant and just timing around water and heat and everything. And we got a good downpour and now my soil's nice and wet. So we're gonna do some planting today. And um, I'll kind of give you an update on what's going on as far as me planting in my schedule for the rest of this month and kind of teetering on to next month. This bed right here is just about wrapping up with the um, husk tomatoes, which is unfortunate, but we've left this spot blank right here. And while they're finishing up, we're gonna go ahead and just get started and plant some rutabagas here. And I know you saw me earlier in the month start some seeds and they were doing really good, but I don't know, they just got kind of cooked and didn't look really appetizing and honestly just didn't do very well so we're gonna just kind of start over and honestly they germinate so fast that I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue one issue that I really foresee having as far as this bed goes and the starting the seeds is honestly just gonna be keeping it watered for the next I'd say week or two it's gonna be kind of an issue we're really going to have to work on that. It's going to be, um, let's see, this week it's going to be in the upper 80s, which isn't terrible. But then it's going to go down into the low or the mid 90s after that. So we definitely want to take precautions to protect it as much as possible. Which gives me another issue I got to deal with. Now the other issue is while they're still coming up and they're germinating and you know, there's not gonna be very big seedlings, we can't really go back and mulch very heavily. So we've gotta be real careful and just be diligent about watering and keeping it as cool as possible. And this cedar here, man, this thing is great. Thoroughly impressed with this guy. Recommend it to anybody. I will say this and it's taken a very, very, very long time but this Seminole pumpkin is just about to get its first bloom. It's looked like it's wanted to bloom for a while, but I just noticed this now. So hopefully we can get a Seminole pumpkin out of this situation. Never grown them before, don't know much about them. So I don't know, but we're gonna get into this, what is going to be the cabbage bed and we're gonna plant our first row of cabbage. And then we're gonna succession plant after, though, after that. And I'll show you kind of what I'm doing. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about my succession planting plan after that for this bed and the rutabaga. Seen it with this sunshade on it for like a week and a half now and it looks so weird without it on there. But I'm glad that it just pulls back just fine so I can come in here and get to planting. So I thought a couple things are going on in this bed here. One, I put about four inches of uh, mulch down this year and look how much is left. Like in some spots it's totally bare. And in other spots, there's some left, but I mean, that's crazy. That stuff has really broken down this year. So we're going to, uh, I went ahead and weeded it the other day and it's pretty clean. So I'm going to straighten it back up and I'm going to put this back row in right here. Dug my furrow and I realized I almost forgot to put in my uh, pre-planting fertilizer. So I'm using just regular 10 10 10 which is not my preferred fertilizer for a fall crop i prefer to use um, something higher in nitrogen and also adding in a bone meal so we're gonna or a blood meal excuse me so we're gonna come back and do that eventually but for right now this is gonna have to do and i mean it doesn't really matter what you put in i just kind of developed this habit over the years and it's a bad habit to break all right so there's a couple reasons why i wanted to go ahead and get these in the ground one it's hot like i said and in these small cells they're going to struggle a bit but also what i want to do is i want to go ahead and get them in because the pest pressure is high and they're going to outgrow and they're going to get root bound and then i'll end up actually setting them back more so we're going to have to rapidly succession plant these and i'm probably just going to wait like 
probably a week, maybe a week to do it. It's just, I have to fight the weather. I've got to go with what's provided to me. So, you know, we're not going to go do anything crazy, but these plants are definitely ready to go in. They've filled up the cell. They're a little bit small, um, but I usually use bigger ones for these. And this time I decided to try a different one. So we'll see how it works. But we're going to put in this row here, this is an eight foot row. And at the end on that trellis down there, we're going to leave a foot spacing. And so we're going to end up putting seven plants in this row. So this bed right here should get 21 plants total. Okay, so I made a little bit of an adjustment and decided to do two rows today. And then next week I'm going to do one more row up front. And so that's just because of the heat. And really, we're going to have a lack of rain, too. So I, I just figured that it would be best to get them in the ground. That way, I can control the water a lot easier via the timers and the soaker hoses and stuff versus me coming out and watering them. Because anytime I get so I'm going to hand water this, I'm going to hand water that, it gets overwhelming and something gets forgotten. And I don't really want these to get forgotten. So we're going to do that. Now, I did also do this. You can see right here going down, I just went ahead and took some of my compost that I've been making and just put it right down the middle. I didn't add any of mine this year, but I knew going into the fall and then into the spring, we're going to refurbish these beds with our own stuff this year. So I just kind of wanted to put, go ahead and put some in. And it only took like six shovel loads just to get a nice layer on top. And I'm going to have to get some mulch. I'm going to have to get some of that blood meal to put on there. So I'll do that tomorrow and get in there, especially before that 95 degree day comes. Cause that's just, you know, that's a plant killer, especially when you're talking about like cabbages and stuff, they're not used to that, but we are going to go ahead and get the shade cloth put back up on it and then go from there. So, you know, it, am I completely ready for it? No, but I had the opportunity. I had the weather and it was cooperating with me to go ahead and get some moisture in the soil. So these plants can have a little bit less plant shock when they get in and then we can kind of get moving a little bit quicker and just adjusting again and putting in a whole nother row, which I didn't really want to do, but I just felt like it was the right decision. So it's like crazy humid right now. So there's like a perfect wind tunnel coming straight through here. So I'm gonna stay in here and get some wind while I tell you about this. So I've never really talked about this too, too much, but I'm sure you kind of noticed that I did like a square foot-ish type situation here. And I did want to address that real quick. So by and by as a whole, I am not a square foot gardener. I definitely look at it as like, hey, I'll take this into account. I use it. I like the idea of a square foot. And I do think that some things work well in a square foot. I'm very aware of the fact that those cabbages are not going to do well in a square foot, especially that variety. It's a bigger variety. So I just want to make sure that I stay on top of it and I may have to do a little bit of trimming. The trimming is like 80% of my problem with square foot gardening because lots of things can fit into a square foot pattern, but there's always a lot of trimming going in, which just puts a lot more stress on me. But sometimes I do like to pack them in, especially stuff like this, this time of year, because I don't know what the survival rate is going to be and I can eliminate stuff, but I would hate to like put it, not put it in and wish I had it. So we can kind of work with that. If I get smaller heads of cabbage, which is what usually happens when you overcrowd stuff, things will be a little bit smaller. That's fine. You know, I went all last year getting little personal size cabbages. We had called on the Backyard Gardens podcast, uh, Batavia was calling it um doorknob cabbages so i'm fine with that it doesn't bother me and if that's what happens again great now i am switching my variety so there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve but it should work out fine and i don't completely subscribe to square foot gardening but i definitely take it into account and use it to when i feel like it's going to help me out as far as the rutabaga goes as soon as they pop up and we see what our germination rate is on these seeds so hopefully within a week we're going to do a little bit more and then after those pop up we'll do another little bit and we'll each week we'll sow more and more as big of a deal with the rutabagas because they store well in the ground they store for a long time in the fridge but it just allows me to get as much as i can out of that garden bed and just let it go because remember the ultimate goal for us this year is all these beds that we're planting from here on out i'm really hoping that 50 percent of them can be empty 
in the month of January and be resting completely so they can get going. So I also have been working over here and a day like today is extremely tempting to plant and I may or may not do it today, I'll probably tomorrow, but I'm gonna show you. So the corn bed's completely cleared out. We just got a little bit of wrap up weeding to go and I'm just about hammered down on what I'm putting in. So we're probably gonna put a lot of compost in this actually and then plant it within the next week probably. And I know there's gonna be some collards going in here and the lettuce will end up going in here at some point, not now, but I think we're also gonna do daikon radishes to help till the ground up. That was the ultimate plan. And I think we're just gonna to need to move forward with that. And we may even switch our plan from putting the parsnips in this bed to putting them over here so they can just help with that. And this bed is where the tomatoes were. We cleared out this whole section and I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to, well, first of all, I do need, I have this tiniest little hole right here, which I can see why I have a hole cause an animal chewed on it. So I'm gonna have to replace this, which isn't a big deal. And then we're gonna come back in and we're just gonna put mustard right here, mustard greens. When this, I think this is a four foot bed. I think I can put like, I'll probably put six plants in it maybe if i double row it put 12 and then that'll be it so and then whatever goes where the peppers are which i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep them yet or not i'm kind of on the fence but this bed is starting to get less and less sun which can be difficult so these fall plants and stuff like that they don't require as much sun so it could really work out to our benefit and we still need to do some radishes and stuff like that so we may put some radishes in there i'm not totally sure and the last thing that I'm going to adjust from my original schedule is I'm gonna pull these up soon. A lot sooner than I thought I was. I'm gonna tell you why too. Not that it's a bad thing, but this bed has taken over. It's just everywhere. The vines are coming out all the way around and it's frustrating to get in and work around the garden. And what I'm actually finding is it's keeping me from working in the garden. It's keeping me from going to certain spots. So I definitely don't want that to happen. And I mean, if you look at this, like this black eyed pea is all up in the way bad. So we're gonna probably do some trimming on that, but I think eliminating the sweet potatoes and pulling out at least a row of them will help alleviate that. And we can pull a row, let it sit and see what happens and then go from there. But I mean, let's face it, I wanna do a whole row. The issue is my broccoli seedlings are, they're ready to go in the ground. I really almost can't put it off much longer. So I need to get them in here. And this just, it has to go. We, our timing is not working out quite like we want. So we're just gonna do a little bit of adjustments. I think I'm right at 87 days for the sweet potatoes. So I need, to have, I need to be at 100. So we've got a little bit of time, but the way I'm looking at it is these babies gotta come out. I just, I can't. And to be honest, I don't know how much they're gonna thicken up. So if we do pull some early, which we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the back row. And if there are any size to them, they're all coming out. So that's what it is. But we're gonna do, wait for that because we're gonna take advantage of the weather again. So next dry spell we have, that's when we're gonna come out and harvest the potatoes. And I think we're gonna have a little dry spell coming up. So that's why I'm saying within the next week or so, they're definitely gonna come up because I was looking at the forecast and there's not gonna be any rain for really good measurable rain for about five to seven days. So right at the end of that, that's a good time to come out here and clear that out. And that'll give my broccoli a little bit of time. I can put the shade over and just set that seed tray under there. And then we can kind of get moving on that too and let them start getting more acclimatized to the heat there. So it should work out pretty good. Goodbye.